that first year LeBron was with the Lakers was your last year there. And from the, from the get-go, even going back to the summer when LeBron signed, like it was like a really mismatched group in terms of skill sets, uh, personalities. Um, and then you guys, meaning you, Kuz, uh, Zoe, Josh Hart, like your guys' names were in trade rumors constantly that whole season. Magic Johnson came and talked to y'all. I think it was right before we played you guys actually in Philly. He came on the road trip to tell you, grow up, whatever. Yeah, I want to hear what he said to you. But, like, how, how, <laughs> how, how difficult – because you, you kind of said it earlier. You were like, yeah, I'm, I'm finally comfortable now. You know, even, even last year, like, you, were not, you weren't comfortable. It was a new coach. It was a new city. You're in a contract year. There's no comfort in that. You know, and so you're finally comfortable now. That last year in L.A., how, how just – how strange was that season? <clears throat> well – Granted, I haven't been in the league um, long, but I, I just felt like things were just not normal. Like every day, uh, it was just it, was, it wasn't um, like I would hear former players from the Lakers be like, um, "That's not how things are supposed to go." Um, uh, you're going to see how organization is, is supposed to be ran. Uh, but for me, like. I had one game where I think I, I, I let, let like the outside get to me because it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like I never like, like, like I never let outside noise or anything get to me because I'm so prepared for everything. Uh, but it was one game where I was like, like, this is more than basketball. Like this, like this, this is the action movie that we're, that we're in right now. Like everybody is posing for the camera. Everybody know where the cameras are. Uh, just everything. So, I'm, so it was important for me to like block out like all the negativity, everything that's not going into the work of basketball. And it was tough for me, but I had like my my uh, on court coach was Brian Keith. So he kept me um, he kept me straight, and he he, he gave me a different advice, and um, he he kept me in the gym like like every day, every morning. Uh, he gave me a routine of when to eat and everything. So I just dive deep into that. Um, I know other guys around me, it 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 killed them. Like <laughs> it killed them. Like every day when you wake up and you see a name on Twitter and the guys around me, they love Twitter. They love <laughs> like they love searching putting in their name. They love putting hitting the search bar and putting in their name. And to see that, uh we come to the we come to the gym, we come to the practice facility and the energy is totally off. Energy is totally off. It doesn't seem like nobody wants to work, anything. So it was it was it was a whirlwind for sure. When you said when you said one game it got to you, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? Like you didn't want to play that night or you had a bad game or you had a blow up in the game or you yelled at the teammate? Like what do you mean like the noise got to you one game? Well, if we're going that far, I think that whole year I was yelling at teammates, I was yelling at coaches, uh, I was getting a little outside of myself, and I felt I felt um, I felt some things building up. You know, when you you get to the point where you build it up, and you're just gonna let everything out, and um, like it's just every everything of the outside noise, everything of. Uh, blah, 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 this, or, or whatever it was, I, I let it affect me at, at some point instead of actually playing the basketball game. Because I knew a lot of things in Lake Land wasn't, wasn't right, and, to be honest. And um, I, I felt that. So it's, I could have took it negative. Some days I was, I was very negative, but um, uh, most of the days I was just trying to be positive and work on myself. That was, that was, that was the point where, uh, like, I'm, I'm always, like, about – everybody else and trying to make sure everybody was good. That was the point in time where I had to take some self-care and be like, I got to make sure I'm safe for, for the rest of my career. No, I, I get it, man. I get it. And uh, I can attest to the fact that you are a great teammate. Um, and other than – I always say everybody's allowed two blow-ups per year. Everybody. Now, they don't have to necessarily be public blow-ups. They can be in practice, or they can be after a practice in the locker room. Like, 
you're, everybody's got to actually let off some steam at some point. It, it's actually, I think it's, I think it's healthy if that happens. How did you find, how did you find out when the trade went through, how did you find out that you were getting traded? Were you, you kind of knew it was happening and what was, what was your reaction? Well, but during the season, uh, I kind of knew it was, how it was going to happen eventually, but I didn't know when when it was going to happen. Uh, my dad called me uh, maybe two days before it happened. He said uh, he thinks something going on and I could be crazy in the minute now. Um, so I got, it was one morning I had just woke up um, and, and my agent had called me and said, um, we think something going on and we think I may get traded uh, in the next like 20 minutes. And I hung up the phone and I just went and laid down and like five minutes later, he called me back and he was like, he just got traded to New Orleans. Uh, Lonzo called me. Uh, I think Josh Hart called me and they were, they were all positive. Like they were like, let, they were like, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's go to New Orleans and let's make something out of it. So I was, like I was, I was prepared for it. I, it wasn't like it wasn't really new to me. And were you excited? Um, in the most bi, in the most bi, can be excited. <laughs> I was, I was, I was excited to change for sure. Leaving okay. LA, I was basketball. I'm not so sure. I was, I was excited to leave Los Angeles, but I know I need to change. And like you said, like you said, you don't know. You don't know like what you're in until you're out of it. Like I, like I haven't went out since I've been to New Orleans. I would go out sometimes in LA, like like more than I should. Uh, but since I've been here, I've been like focused, like focused on everything that I need to do. And even even being focused, I, I notice sometimes that I can be even more focused and locking in on some of the work that I have to do outside of. The basketball game, whether it's me getting on his computer looking up different things, and uh, it's, it's just put me in a different mindset. So I'm, I'm definitely happy for the change. But yeah, did you have did you have a favorite player, somebody that you idolize, or somebody that you try to model your game after when you were when you re- not necessarily when you were eight years old, but I mean when you realize, oh shit, I'm, I'm tall, I'm athletic, I can shoot, like I, I can play basketball, like this is who I want to be on court. Well, it was. For me, it was always Kevin Durant, really. Uh, like, I, I watched him in high school. I watched him in college, and I definitely uh, watched him from his rookie year to this point. And uh, just the way he handled the basketball, like, he was, when I was um, coming up, he was labeled as 6'9", and I thought, I, like, I thought, I thought, like, he was amazing then. But getting in the league and seeing that he's actually seven foot, and he's doing all this stuff, and when I could test him, like he act like he doesn't see me at all, and I feel like I got some of the longest arms in the league. Like I, like I'm like, yeah, this, this, he can do like everything on the basketball court, and and that that like when I see him, I'm like, yeah, I want I want to be like him. But besides that, um, like I like for my game, like biggest part for my game, like I get the happiest when I'm passing the basketball, and I don't know, I think that's for me being a point guard, kind of like a point guard in like my senior year in high school. But like, I get the happiness. I don't know where I got that from, but when, I, when I'm passing the basketball and I'm hitting guys in the right spot. Can we, let's just talk about Kevin Durant for a second, because I think even whether you're a casual NBA fan or an NBA expert, I think we all maybe took him for granted a little bit. And in these I guess they played two games now. He looks fucking unbelievable. He looks unbelievable. And and I I'm like, we did we did we not notice? Do we take it for granted? Do we forget? Did our collective minds forget just how bad this dude was? I mean, he's 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 unbelievable. And and to your point, there's not anything he can't do on the basketball floor. I don't know if there's another player like him, period. Period. There's not a thing he can't do on the basketball floor. No, he shoots it at a crazy percentage, like crazy. Like the shots he contested, whatever it is, is like he he he, like he already seen it go in. Like he, he visualizing everything, his footwork, uh, his balance on everything. It's always the same. Like like I like he's like 
one of the greatest scores I ever seen play the game back. He said, so he said, I, I was reading a couple things earlier today. He said uh, publicly, I think he even said it to us at, at certain points that he sees part of your game in him. You know, he's acknowledged that before. Is that a thing? Do you, was it weird for you when you sort of modeled yourself after him to a certain extent for that kind of thing to happen? You're kind of like, oh shit, not only did I dream about being in the NBA and I'm in the NBA, it's like I dreamed about being that guy and he's saying publicly he plays like me. I mean, yeah, it's weird. I mean, I, I never imagined being in this position at all. Uh, I dreamed of it, but I mean, I, I couldn't think of it being right now. And like those comments make me want, like, motivate me to like go even harder. Like, to, to be maybe even better than him. And, like, he he set the he set the blueprint and set the bar really really high. And, like, that's what I want to take. 